Hello and welcome to our policy advice on drought management in Cape Town. So we are group C3 and we will be using Mexico City as our reference city. So the general vision for our plan is to integrate spatial planning with infrastructure, as well as improving the circularity, um, which can be done by recycling water in multiple ways. And finally, to reduce the overall demand of water through um, more efficient water systems, upgraded water systems, which we will get into in the next slides. So our strategy, so more specifically, the circularity can be improved by collecting rainwater either through rooftop barrels, which can be done on a smaller uh, household scale as well as a larger neighborhood scale, um, as well as implementing floodable ponds along mountain slopes, which allow for natural water retention, uh, which is one of the problems that needs to be addressed in Cape Town. And the systems that we, that we mentioned can be increased in efficiency. The systems we're actually uh, referencing are, for example, um, the flushing of toilets, um, the irrigation of gardens, or even a, a larger scale, the irrigation of agriculture or the construction industry. And we will get into how exactly we can increase those, that efficiency. But first, there are some factors that can make or break our vision and strategy. Um, for example, the physical um, factor of the <clears throat> geographical barriers, which may limit the possibility to actually reach certain areas or implement these measures in specific areas due to their physical geographical uh, elements. Then we also have economic factors, such as the divide of the poor and rich settlements, which is also slightly physical. Um, but it basically entails that it can be um, more difficult to implement and obviously more difficult to reach in these um, poorer settlements, as I discussed. However, Cape Town has been uh, discussed as the strongest economic central business district in South Africa, which could be beneficial to our, to our plans as it could mean that they, it might be more realistic in Cape Town, actually. There's also institutional factors such as the... Um, possibly the ongoing or proposed development plans, which could get in the way of what we of our, of our vision of our strategy, as well as organizational factors of the resources, the actual resources to need, which could be sufficient or insufficient, depending on it. And we want to implement it citywide, which could make it more complicated. Also, being, being inspired by Mexico City as our reference city, we thought of some specific measures we can implement there. Um, number one is like fixing the leaking pipes and supplying new pipes because what was the case in Mexico City in South Africa, old water infrastructure has been a problem for municipalities for years now. Um, also, another specific measure would be adding wells because water leaks are becoming a bigger cause for concern with municipalities desperately trying to conserve more water in South Africa. Also, reducing the reservoir flows would help um, the water situation in South Africa right now. With conserving more water, with more water retention. Right? Yes. And improving small-scale rainfall catchment would also help South Africa. Because like how we saw in Mexico City, in Mexico City, they have little barrels to catch rainfall. And this would help um, preserving more water in South Africa as well. Yeah, and we would also like to implement blue-green infrastructure, which means, which essentially means we want to integrate bodies of water or more elements of water into our development plans. This allows for more water retention, which also allows, you know, in the end, for less uh, drought uh, possibility. Um, as well as this is a more spe more specific measure, um, as we discussed about the uh, efficiency earlier. Reducing the volume of toilet flushes can be can be done through, for example, installing water displacement devices or fitting variable flush devices. And these all basically constrain how much water can be used in a flush. And this can also be applied to other elements like dishes or laundry or um, the garden irrigation, as we said, just overall implementing measures to reduce the amount of water that's used in those practices. And by and using all these measures, we would like to um, improve the situation in South Africa, yeah. which it is now. Yeah, and that that would be all. So thank you for listening. Thank you.
have a pretty epic water crisis in Mexico City, and so we figured let's start harvesting rainwater in these neighborhoods where people need it. Isla Urbana is an organization that designs and installs rainwater harvesting systems. We've installed something like 24,000 or 25,000 rainwater harvesting systems just using revenue. The rainwater harvesting systems that we install are pretty simple. It teaches people how to harvest, filter, and potabilize water at home. The whole thing starts with the roof of the house, which is the catchment surface. So we work with the family so that they have a very clear understanding of keeping their roof as clean as possible. The water that falls off of that roof, we channel through gutters and pipes. We chlorinate that water. We do a simple sedimentation process that allows fine particles of sediments to settle in the tank. And then after that, we pass it through a pretty simple filtration system that then feeds water to the rest of the house. And we can get water of uh, whatever quality we need. From kind of generally used domestic water, we can get purified water that you could bottle. Me subo cuando ya va a llegar temporada de lluvia y ahí la recolectamos. Para muchas cosas sirve, está limpiecita. Captamos de 15,000 a 20,000 litros de agua por año. ¿eh? 10 personas que ocupamos esa agua. Todo el año con esa agüita la pasamos. Nos alcanza, gracias a Dios.